Hi everyone, uh, this is Robert here with Mod Science, modscience.net, Facebook Mod Science. Check out the website, still under development, but there's more content regularly being added uh, about water um, custom looping and high end enthusiast uh, cus uh, PC hardware. Uh, today I'll be doing an unboxing video of EK Waterblocks, uh, their GA AX370 gaming monoblock for. Gigabytes Aorus Gaming K7, Gaming K5, and I think it's the Aorus 5, Gaming 5 motherboards, all of which are uh, based on the X370 chipset uh, with AMD. All three fine motherboards. I've had the opportunity to test the Gaming 5. I currently own a Gaming K7 board, which I actually prefer of the two, mainly because of the, unblock, uh, the unlocked, um, um, I think it was a CPU mon uh, multiplier. Um, but primarily because it's a pretty more motherboard and um, I haven't really overclocked it too much uh, so you have to pardon my, my laugh of, lack of experience with the over overclocking aspect of things. I primarily do custom looping because it looks freaking cool. Um, so I, the, the, the motherboard itself is a pretty board. Um, lots of LEDs, lots of RGB lighting, um, tons of RGB lighting, and it looks really cool inside of a Corsair 570X case that I have here. Um, I'll actually show you pictures and video of that build. Um, I'm going to do the unboxing first, and then I'll start working on getting it installed on the motherboard itself. Okay. So it comes in uh, EK's. I've always liked EK's boxing because or packaging because it's actually very high quality, and um, you know it's always um, um, just it's just very well packaged in my opinion. I mean this EK of course is a Slovenian com a Slovenian company. Um, don't even ask me where that is, but. Um, uh, it is, uh, they've been around for a long time and of course everyone knows, and anybody who has been custom looping um, for a while at least knows, is familiar with who they are. I haven't been custom looping for, looping for very long, but I've done a ton of research and EK I very much trust and appreciate their brand and their quality of, of their materials. So um, anyway, it's got the model number there, EKFB GAAX370 Gaming Monoblock. This one is the Nickel and Plexi model, so it's got kind of a see-through. Uh, you can actually see like the uh, the block itself, and you see the fluid inside of it too. It even lights up, so it's it's actually pretty cool. I have um, the um, EK's um, Crosshair Six ROG um, um, monoblock installed on the Crosshair Six motherboard, uh, which has like a Ryzen Seven build on it. Um, great great block. Um, I get temps around 30 degrees Celsius, overclocked to about four, uh, at idle of course, and then of course you know it. Um, uh, whenever the, the, si the system is running at max, temperatures are probably closer to about 50 or 60, um, which I guess are good. <laughs> Again, I, I do the custom looping primarily because it looks freaking cool. Um, the back of the box kind of gives you just some technical data in different languages, high performance water block for computer cooling, uh, industry standard G4, uh, G1 four, uh, quarter inch port threads, low flow restriction and pressure drop, Mounting mechanism included, made of high quality materials, and they're not lying about it. So it's a very well built um, 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 block itself. Now in the box, it includes the water block, uh, the mounting mechanism, instruction manual, and some thermal interface material, um, which is like thermal padding. Um, they, I, I, either that or they have like the um, thermal paste in some cases. So uh, cover slides off there. We have the box itself. Um, kind of the labeling on the box there, nothing special. And then of course we have uh, the box open here. So there's the extensive um, manual. You should definitely read these. It's actually, their instructions are very clear, very easy to understand. Um, you know, and, and you know, initially you may think that this may be a little intimidating at installing a monoblock onto your motherboard. But if you've had experience installing motherboards into systems, um, it's actually very easy. Um, you know, I've had quite a bit of experience installing and reinstalling um, the um, um, Supremacy, Supremacy Evo block because I had a lot of issues uh, just earlier on when I first um, bought into the, the Ryzen builds. Everything's much smoother now, of course. But um, yeah, if you have experience building computers, this is really nothing different. Um, but anyway, there's the, the general instructions there. Okay. Uh, and here we have the thermal padding. I forget what the thickness of it is, but um, you know this is two-sided padding. So you, you peel off one side and then peel off the other, and then you place it onto the MOSFET or the VRMs and then different parts of the uh, the, the motherboard itself. 
Um, you don't actually put it on the CPU, you actually use the thermal paste, which it looks like they've actually provided to you. But these are pretty cool. Um, you can cut them, obviously, to, to different sizes. And they actually do provide you a little bit more, with a little bit more than you really need, just in case you mess up. Um, but it's pretty easy to cut um, and very useful. And then, of course, we do have these screw kits here. I, don't, I couldn't tell you what the size of the screws are, uh, but they are small. Um, and most likely used, yeah, these are all going to be used to mount the actual, um, about the, uh, the, the chips, uh, the block to the, ch uh, the CPU itself. And then, of course, the smaller screws are used for the back of the monoblock uh, as well. Uh, and then, of course, we've got an Allen wrench in there, and we've got EK's uh, TIM Ecto Thermal Induction Monitor or something. I don't know what the heck that means, but uh, the Ectotherm. Um, I don't know if I've used this one before. They had a, one, one set had like, some of their Grizzly coolant in it or another brand's Grizzly coolant in it, which I really liked. Uh, but they at least provide you with some thermal paste. Uh, and then, of course, the infamous uh, mounting bracket. Um, apparently, there were a lot of issues before um, with the the certain mounted bracket that they used um, and that it was actually the gasket itself this is I guess the gasket in this case it's a much different kind of material than it used to be I couldn't tell you what it is uh, I'm sure a, a Google search will probably yield that for you but um, it uh, you know there was a lot of issues initially with um, with with people mounting the the blocks to the motherboards because the gasket apparently was too thick and what would happen is that people would kind of over secure the monoblock to the actual um, uh, motherboard itself and, and kind of over tighten it and bend the motherboard and it would affect you know the, 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 the performance of their computers. Um, so I think this new um, uh, material, this thinner um, gasket is actually uh, going to be much, much better for people uh, to, to combat that issue. I haven't had any issues ever since I've installed the monoblock onto my Crosshair 6 board. Standard AM4 mounting bracket included as well. And then, of course, uh, we have the a little warning there. Do not forget other EK products for your liquid cooling system, in case you forgot, um, which is easy to do. But uh, their website, of course, is listed. And let's get right to it. There's a little foam panning to protect it. And boom, there is the monoblock itself. And I'll be honest with you, I like, um, I'll go ahead and move the box here. I really like this layout a little bit better um, than the Crosshair 6 board that they had, um, mainly because um, the, uh, the, the layout of this, um, of the fluid here. So you'll notice here these lines are kind of where the, the, the actual coolant will go. This is the jet right there. Um, it looks like... Yeah, it'll be, it looks like it's going to be mounted or filling up these two sections, which is actually much more than on the Crosshair 6 board. Okay, and continuing on, I, I wanted to get some more lighting for you guys. So uh, I actually like the layout of this monoblock a little bit more than the Crosshair 6 board um, a monoblock, mainly because, yeah, the fluid seems to travel to more parts of the block itself. And it looks cooler. I mean, it'll be more liquid going to be displayed. And then down in the bottom here, I believe there are like, um, R there's IG RGB lighting. And you'll notice here, they've got the cool little Aorus Eagle and the um, uh, Aorus Verbage there. And of course, the infamous EK badge with the plastic protectant on there. Um, the AM4 jet um, is also included, I believe. Yeah, this is the inlet port, if I'm not mistaken. And then this is the outlet port. So this would technically come from your... Uh, from your radiator and then it, this would feed out to either the reservoir or other components in the system depending on your loop and uh, These are G uh, G quarter inch um, standard fittings um, is a standard pretty much for uh, the, f the fitting size of course and then on the back of this this is that where the um, actual uh, Copper I think it's copper this entire thing is made out of copper if I'm not mistaken um, and usually nickel plated and I, f I remember reading that EK stated that there was really no difference in copper versus uh, um, nickel plating it's just more of an aesthetic appeal you guys can correct me if I'm wrong there but um, yeah it looks really cool in installed into the system itself and um, I would say it's probably about maybe like six inches uh, tall and then maybe about maybe about five inches wide. Maybe I'm, I'm not very good with measurements, but um, it's a pretty decent size and it actually takes up a lot of real estate on the motherboard. But it, it actually look, makes it look really cool. You actually end up moving the, uh, the uh, removing the coolers that run to uh, perpendicular to one each other to, to each other 
right above where the actual CPU would be installed. Okay. Um, back of it, of course, yeah, these are the mounting holes. And then EK usually has like an original packaging seal that they include, um, which is also serrated at certain points, um, just to make sure that you don't kind of open it and then try and return it as something that's never been opened. So pretty smart of them. Um, and then of course, I'll go ahead and unwrap this thing for you guys here. Yeah, it's really pretty. Um, and it, it, these things look really great when they're installed into the system itself. So uh, these little screws right here, you can actually unmount the, the, um, the plexi, I think it's plexiglass. I don't know what material it is. It says plexi, so I'm gonna assume it's plexiglass, but again, if I'm wrong, correct me. Uh, you can actually remove this part, this entire part off of the block itself, because sometimes you know the jet actually gets um, filled up and clogged. Um, gunk builds up, you know, um, coolant um, um, also builds up in there too. So you can actually remove the entire thing. And this black thing that runs around the entire part is actually a rubber gasket, um, um, which, is, which helps protect the seal, of course, okay. And I believe they do provide, yeah, they have an Allen wrench inside of the kit itself too. And moving to the back here. Okay, picking up where we left off. So these portions right here actually will go over the VRMs um, with the thermal padding. That's where you'd actually, you'd actually stick the thermal padding onto the VRMs themselves uh, first and then kind of lower this entire thing onto, it. it's, uh, onto, onto uh, the overall build. This right here, of course, is the cover for the copper connection to the CPU. I'm not going to take it off right now. Um, I'll kind of just give you a peek at it, but uh, a peek at it, but um, uh, actually, it's also nickel plated, of course, but there is usually a portion of it. Yeah, it looks like that is also nickel plated too, um, the entire thing. And in some cases, some connections have been copper. Um, but yeah, it's copper underneath, nickel plated, of course. Here are the four connections, to, uh, the M4 connections. And there are usually little leak test um, um, stickers indicating that you know it passed EK's uh, quality control again very high quality built uh, very very weight and very much um, very nice weight to it uh, very they look really cool installed I'll, I'll, I'll upload like a picture of what it looks like but uh, very very high quality item and uh, it cost about I think it was uh, it's like hundred and sixty seven dollars if you go on your uh, onto uh, EK's website but that's it. I think they price out the products based on the euro but um, uh, in the States, if you buy it, it's probably about $135 or so. I actually, I actually pre-ordered it and bought it from EK directly. Um, and then, of course, it has a four-pin connector, to, and it says RGB Fusion compatible, too, so you plug it into the motherboard. It'll sync up with the color-changing effects that are built into uh, the motherboard itself. But uh, this part usually lights up, and it casts a nice light glow through the rest of it, and it also... Uh, it makes the, the fluid really stick out a lot more. I'm going to actually have red coolant, uh, red pastel coolant flowing through this entire thing. And um, it, it actually has a really nice effect to it. I'm telling you right now, I really like how there's more, um, um, more real estate for the fluid to, to flow through. Um, the crosshair thing looks really, really nice installed. But I have a feeling that this one is probably going to look a little, bit, a little bit better, especially considering all the lighting that will be in there. Okay. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much everything about this. It's a very simple video. Um, it's a pretty straightforward product, very easy to install. Um, I'm actually going to start working on the installation here in a bit, and I may record that just so you guys can see what it's like to install it on your motherboard. But very high quality item and uh, definitely worth the purchase too. Um, very high. It's, it's, it's more of an enthusi enthusiast product. I mean, I may be able to get some mar uh, marginally improved overclocks out of the Ryzen 5. I have a 1600 uh, installed into this build, uh, a Ryzen 7 1700X um, installed into the Crosshair board. My current Ryzen 5 1600 uh, currently is clocked at like 3.8 gigahertz. And I think it was like 1.45 volts, um, not necessarily the highest overclock, of course, but I may be able to get a little bit better out of it with this thing. I'll let you guys know what results I get, of course, at, uh, at a later point in time. But yeah, that's pretty much it about the, 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 the product itself. Um, very high quality item. Again, I can't stress that enough. It's got such a solid build to it, a really nice luster to the entire thing. 
And when it's installed and the lights are lit up, it'll look really cool with the red coolant as well. So that's it for now. And again, I do appreciate you checking out the video. And if you did like the video, go ahead and um, like, the like it, of course. If you have any questions about the product itself, uh, go ahead and leave those questions in the comments below. Again, um, go ahead and subscribe to the video too. There will be more updates of the build log. Um, I'll also be buying a Radeon Ve RX Vega when it comes out, doing some unboxing of that too and installing it. Um, I'm also going to show you some more videos of the um, custom loop builds that I have for a Ryzen 5 and a Ryzen 7 machine. And any other kind of interesting high-end equipment stuff um, focused around custom looping or around AMD um, will, be more, will definitely be covered on my website too. Uh, again, any questions, let me know. Check out the website again, modscience.net, Facebook Mod Science, and more importantly, thanks again.